what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel today you're gonna be doing a little mason rudolph film room uh big game against the Bengals, 290 yards two touchdowns uh big time win to keep the steelers playoff hopes uh hanging on by a thread keep them alive so i uh, definitely wanted to break this one down for you guys i know we talked a lot about uh mason's performance uh in the post post game recap so uh, just before we jump into the film, we're going to go over the good plays, bad, everything in between. Uh, but I thought overall it was a really good performance. But just before we get started, y'all know the drill. Just please make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment, all that good stuff. Uh, definitely helps the channel grow, and I really appreciate it. Uh, let's get to it. So Mason making his first start since 2021 comes out the gates swinging. Uh, 80-something yard touchdown pass to George Pickens, uh, who takes the slant to the crib. Now, just before we see him waltz into the end zone right here, let's just look at the coverage. Uh, the Bengals are going to be playing cover three. We get a press corner up at the top of the screen. Uh, this is a play that Steelers have ran all season long, but it's something that they haven't ran with a ton of success. Uh, it's just dragging spacing. Uh, so dragging just slant flat up at the top of the screen, and you get the spacing uh, at the bottom with the little tear motion uh, from the running back or the bumper motion. I guess that's what San Fran's calling it right now. Um, but really the the key thing here is uh, if you get middle field close, you get this uh, post safety in the middle of the field, you have to look at the slant first. Uh, so you want to read the top of the screen. He's going to immediately peek at Pickens right here. Does a good job winning off press. Hits him nice, accurate ball right on the face mask and then puts him in good position because the ball is out on time. Puts him in good position uh, to make plenty of yards after the catch. Uh, just to go over a little bit real quick of the progression uh, because I've seen this kind of uh, play so much on Twitter um, over the you know course of the season or whatever. But, you know, dragging up at the top of the screen is typically red with the arrow. Uh, so it would be Hayward in this case uh, to the slant. But right here, you have to make sure that you at least look at the slant against cover three. And the reason why is you can look at the middle linebacker right here, number 55. It's going to expand him in zone coverage. So then say that slant's not open, you can find the sit route, Darnell Washington, right over the ball, and he's going to be able to get you a nice completion for a first down. But overall, ball comes out on time, really accurate football, uh, and you get plenty of yards after the catch. That's definitely something the Pickens has done a lot better job of this year is just making sure um, you know he's getting upfield after the catch. He's tripled his yards after the catch over the course of the season. Uh, so it's really nice to just see like simple plays executed um, and, you know, you get a big play out of it just from poor angles from the safety uh, and some really bad tackling um, from the Bengals defense. But it's nice to be able to take advantage of stuff like that. All right, so very next play here, we're going to get kind of a mirrored stick concept with the out routes from the boundary receivers. Uh, one thing I just want to point out just throughout this video, uh, this is basically a Tampa 2 simulated pressure from the Bengals. Um, but one thing I wanted to point out is just um, – Mason just – I felt like his eyes were in the right spot. He knew where to go with the ball. So, you see number 91, he's dropping out. They're bringing this simulated uh, from the weak side, uh, which Najee does a good job picking it up. But you see Mason right here. He's seeing this guy drop. His hand is separating before, like, Allen Robinson's even looking back at the quarterback. That's just – I think that's the, the biggest difference that I saw just throughout the game is, like, he just knew where he was supposed to go with the football. Like, eyes in the right place, knowing what he was going to get, um, and then confirming it post-snap. Um, and just getting the ball out quickly. Getting the ball out on time helps the offensive lineman. These cheap these cheap completions like this uh, are good to, you know, help you keep on schedule and move the chains. All right, next play here, going to motion into double stacks. Uh, Jalen Warren in the backfield. Going to get man coverage. Looks like uh, some type of cover one on the back end from the Bengals. Uh, just a really nice job here, I feel like, just making sure that he's getting to the check down quickly and on time. You see he's working the top of the screen. Looks like you're getting some type of arrow and then kind of a corner or a smash concept to the top of the screen with Pickens. He comes off this, even though, you know, George does have him out leverage right here. So, I mean, you could make the argument that, yeah, you should throw that ball. Um, you got kind of like a drop concept from the bottom of the screen, got Deontay on the drag, and then the end breaker from Allen Robinson. Um, and all these routes right here are well leveraged. Uh, you can make the argument, you know, hey, like you can rip one of these end breakers, whatever. Uh, but there is some pressure uh, coming from his blind side. He does a good job of filling that. Dan Moore's giving up a little bit of ground. Uh, I think that's Hendrickson right there. Just a good job by Mason, finding the check down uh, and allowing Jalen to get uh, plenty of yards after the catch on third down. Uh, it's just knowing, like, the situation, too. It's like third and four, third and five. Uh, you don't need very much yardage. Just dump it off. Um, you get man coverage, especially that you see uh, 55 here. He kind of loses track of the back. Jalen's a small guy, kind of creeps out the backfield. He does a good job just getting the ball out. 
Uh, and I, again, I just – the whole – theme of this video you guys will see is just getting the ball out on time knowing where to go with the football uh finding the check downs quickly not sticking on one receiver good stuff so we've seen the Steelers lean into this pony personnel with both backs in the game uh a little bit over the course of the season they've had some success with the two uh this is kind of a nice little wrinkle uh aligning Jalen Warren to the bottom of the screen they're just running a peel concept kind of a fake screen uh really nice touch here with Rudolph you see the shoulder fake the ball fake with the eyes what that's going to do is the Bengals are playing kind of like a three deep, three under uh, type of fire zone here. They're going to bring a little bit of pressure. Fake is going to pull that second level defender. I believe that's Mike Hilton out of the throwing lane. And then he automatically knows right here we got the uh, the one third defender at the top of the screen. He's in bail coverage. So he's playing the deep third. He knows right here, you know, you see how early this ball is coming out. Uh, that He's got basically a free access throw. I also want to point out, uh, again, just the ball fake. That's pretty in and of itself, but just the ball location right here. Uh, the anticipation of it is good, you know, getting it out on time, uh, but also appreciate the ball location. Uh, just putting it on his back shoulder because that's going to keep him away from the defender. You don't want to uh, run him into trouble here. Uh, you know, if he puts this on the upfield shoulder and leads him up the field, he's going to be running into trouble. But you put that back shoulder right on his face mask, plenty of room to get both feet on the sideline. Nice job by Allen Robinson, finish it through contact, and another easy first down. All right, uh, this is becoming like one of the Steelers' staple uh, passing concepts this season. It's the shot concept. We talk about it all the time on the channel. Oh, Sean Payton, staple. Uh, had a big play here, uh, if not for some interior pressure right at the middle. Uh, I think this would w this would have been a uh, potentially a touchdown because uh, Calvin Austin absolutely cooks uh, Mike Hilton off the line. And let's just talk about the concept in general. So shock, all that is a stick route for number three, uh, top of the screen. You're going to get Calvin Austin as the number two. He's just going to run a slot fade, and then you're going to kind of get an expansion hitch uh, from the number one, which is George Pickens. If you get middle field closed, especially man coverage, if you get man coverage. The ball needs to go to the slide fade. This is a this is what this concept is designed to beat. Uh, at the bottom of the screen, you get another drag and get a little slant flat combo. Uh, so the Bengals are showing man coverage pre-snap, and that's exactly what the Steelers get. Uh, they do a good job of getting a simulated pressure to free up a free rusher at the quarterback, and ultimately that is the difference between this being a potential touchdown and this being an incompletion. So let's talk about the pass protection element of it. Uh, the Steelers are going to be in five-man protection, and you can see that the edge defender on the right and left, both of those guys actually drop out, and then they bring the middle linebacker up the A-gap. But the problem is uh, Dan Moore does a, does, is a little bit late uh, getting his hands on 91 right here, and that leads to some pressure uh, up the B-gap, which is never what you want to see as a quarterback. You want to protect the A and the B-gap. Um, at least get, the, get your hands on the most dangerous – and unfortunately, this ball ends up about five yards under thrown. Calvin Austin tries to come back to it. You could argue that that's probably supposed to be pass interference. I personally hate throwing or hate getting or seeing um, underthrown balls become pass interference. But he definitely does not look back for the ball, and he does make contact with the receiver. So by rule, by definition, uh, I think that one probably could have been called DPI. But they were letting him play a little bit on this night. So. Um, just a missed opportunity there. I think if the protection is better, you probably get a big explosive play on that one. All right, so this next one here, I believe this is second and 10. Uh, this is right around the two-minute warning. Uh, the Steelers actually ended up scoring here, being really aggressive, which I liked. Uh, I have no clue why the Steelers like this play so much. Uh, it's basically just like all hitches, uh, and the boundary receivers are going to end up running what's called a hinge. So a hinge is just kind of like a vertical fallout, um, almost like a comeback, except the receiver is going to open up the opposite direction towards the sideline. I think if you are being critical about Mason's game or, or just like his overall skill set, I think these throws to the boundary, uh, at least I remember this from when he started primarily in that 2019 season are not really his specialty uh, you do see some uh, some pressure there with Cincinnati bringing a blitz this is just man coverage across the board cover one um, and he does a good job you know getting this ball out early you see his hand separating way before Pickens uh, ends up getting out of his break this isn't the cleanest route uh, by Pickens but I also want to point out that um, this ball really needs to be thrown towards the sideline. The purpose of the hinge instead of the comeback is because the receiver will have vision on the ball as it's in flight. So it kind of allows him to adjust to poorly thrown footballs like that. 
Um, but I think that that ball placement right there, um, the accuracy at times in this game was a little spotty whenever there was some pressure, uh, which is kind of expected, especially when you're a guy that hasn't played um, a ton of football recently. You know, aside from the preseason, we haven't really seen him in game action, but you can kind of see where this ball misses, misses low and inside. Um, he also misses another one inside later, which is always sketchy when you're throwing towards the sideline. So, uh, but just something to monitor, not, not the, um, uh, not the worst rep in the world, but definitely not the prettiest one of the game either. One thing I'll definitely note when Lou Anarumo, Bengals defense coordinator, uh, gave Rudolph really simple or vanilla looks pre-snap, he took advantage of them pretty easily. Uh, so right here, you can see that this is an obvious quarter shell um, on third down and long. You will see his eyes go immediately to Deontay Johnson running this out route right at the sticks. Balls on the money, move the, move the chains. Uh, one thing just about this uh, that makes it so good is, yeah, the cornerback does have outside leverage, but as soon as he gets in this side, side saddle position with his back to the sideline, there is a 0% chance that he is going to be able to make a play on this outbreaker. As long as the receiver, which Deontay does, a good job of threatening him vertically because you really want to get him to cross over and get him to uh, have to respect that speed and stay on top. Uh, and you can see, like, just at that at that point, he has no chance to make a play on this ball as long as it's out on time. Again, just going back and looking at the anticipation of it, the ball's out, his hand separating right here. Deontay's still not out of his break. Again, I just I want to keep reiterating that theme for the purpose of the channel because a lot of people have asked me on Twitter or whatever about, like, hey, what did you see different about what Mason did over, you know, Mitch or Kenny or whatever, why the offense looks so good. I just think the ball was out on time and he knew where to go with the football. Um, and those two things obviously paid a lot of dividends. So Dan Moore picks up a really weird penalty. Uh, they caught him for a holding on a snatch trap move, which I thought was bogus. Uh, incompletion for a check down. This is like second and 20 or something like that. This is the exact same play that we saw, I think, on the first drive of the game where you kind of get this uh, motion from Friar Muth. You get the high low. Uh, I think they may have been coming back to this because they wanted to see if they could get that uh, same leverage uh, with Pickens. But as you see, uh, this is just cover three from the Bengals, and they have it uh, pretty well leveraged on the bottom of the screen. Uh, and then you're going to get the two end breakers, kind of that drive concept um, at the top of the screen. Just a check down to Deontay. Again, this is uh, some yards better than no yards. Ends up being like second or third and like 16 or whatever because of the penalty. Um but, again, I think it's better than, you know, you want to get some yardage instead of taking a sack right here, just get the ball out, um, you know, set up for third down. So this is a really interesting decision. Third and 15 with a little over a minute left to go in the half. Tomlin, historically a very conservative coach, uh, allows them to take a shot play uh, at the end of the half, and it ends up working. Um, you know, great result right here. You get a little chip shot play, and what I mean by that is you go into empty – you have both of uh, kind of the innermost receivers, Robinson and Jalen Warren, kind of chip on the edge rushers. That just to give the quarterback a little bit more time. You see um, really what this is. You just kind of get this sit route over the middle, uh, and then both of the outside receivers are running double moves. Uh, you're just trying to get something more more uh, than anything else, maybe like a pass interference or something like that. Uh, but credit to Rudolph for hitching up in the pocket. You'll see him hitch, hitch, throws with a good base, and, you know, layers a pretty good ball. Like, this is, uh, you know, maybe not the most accurate throw in the world. But, again, it's kind of hard to say because Pickens almost uh, doesn't even run a double move right here. He just kind of beats his man with speed. Um, this is a really good uh, effort to push this ball down the field. You can kind of see the landmark difference between Johnson up at the top of the screen and Pickens at the bottom. That's why I kind of give this throw a little bit more of a boost on film that I did live. I thought he kind of just missed this one wide. Um, but it's kind of hard to say where the landmark was supposed to be. And uh, that's an absolutely insane toe tap grab from Pickens. But, you know, that's kind of the stuff that we're kind of accustomed to seeing uh, from him. But I just really like, again, the hitch up in the pocket. Does a good job, you know, not being too heel clicky, keeping a good base. And he's you see him eyeing the post safety, right? And that's just to keep him out of the play. Uh, he knows that, you know, he's going to have to give these two receivers a while to get down the field. Pass protection is very good. And then at the last minute, he just kind of glances over there, throws a ball. I mean, this thing is a prayer, uh, but this throw is good enough, uh, especially when you, you know, just accept the fact that I'm not really sure if this route is actually supposed to go this way. Um, and an absolutely ridiculous catch. I mean, I don't – there's – I say this all the time about – uh, Pickens, man, but there are just very few people, especially at 22 years old, that can do some of the things that he can do. Um, 
that is a magnificent grab for a huge play right before half. You know, as I said, uh, you know, every performance is going to have those plays that you want back. And I think that this is one of those plays that Mason's going to look at the film on and probably say that he wants this one back because uh, the Steelers had another touchdown right here. Um, perfect play call. Uh, they're going to be on trips um, to the top of the screen. And really, they're running uh, Deontay Johnson on this kind of deep over, deep crossing route. Uh, they are getting some variation of quarters uh, from the Bengals. Really, the three-up player right here is a linebacker, and he's expecting help, I think, from the weak side safety. But you can actually see as Deontay Johnson starts to run this crosser, uh, of course, that linebacker has no chance in hell to run with him. Uh, but you can see the safety is actually has his eyes in the wrong place right here. Uh, so he's not even going to be able to give this dude help. And you can see Deontay's reaction. He knows he's wide open. If that ball's to the sideline, uh, he has a good chance at scoring. Uh, again, get the check down. It's not the end of the world right here. Uh, I'm not really sure of what the really progression right here is. I'm thinking he's looking into the slide at Calvin Austin. Not really sure why, um, or I'm not sure that I've seen them run this play recently. Uh, so I'm not really sure where, where the read or the progression should be. I can just tell you, if you're putting your number one receiver in the slot at the number three and you get this type of quarters look, uh, man, this is a tough one. Like, I know that that throw doesn't look that open right here, uh, but that's NFL open and definitely one that, uh, you know, Mason's going to want back. As you can see throughout the, you know, course of the film too, you know, Hendrickson gave Moore some trouble. So there's obviously some issues from a pass protection standpoint just with him. Uh, Hendrickson's a guy who, uh, you know, he's a power rusher and Moore typically does struggle with those guys. He lets them get into their chest. Uh, he just doesn't anchor extremely well. But, um, you know, the Sewers played really well, scored over 30 points, but there were even more points to be had on the film, which is, you know, honestly a good sign. All right, so another example, kind of what I was talking about earlier, just some of the accuracy to the sideline stuff. I think that is one thing that, you know, he doesn't do quite as well as Kenny uh, or Mitch. Uh, we're getting, kind of getting a free access throw at the top of the screen. Cornerback's playing way off, like eight, nine yards off. Of course, Pickens, uh, with how many downfield catches he's had over the course of his career, guys are going to respect his speed, especially because, you know, the majority of the routes that he runs are vertical routes. Uh, so you get a free access throw here, easy first down. The throws out on time. You can see, like, he has a little urgency in his drop, back foot, plant, and then he just sprays the throw. Uh, this is high and outside. I think it just from a quarterback mechanic standpoint, it looks like the Steelers are running a little drive mesh um, concept, have no issue uh, with taking the free access throw up top. In fact, I think that's actually where the ball needs to go. Um, but just from a quarterback mechanic standpoint, I think you can see some different things pop up on film with Mason. Uh, I feel like, this is just my opinion, I feel like he has a habit of locking his uh, front leg out. You see how his uh, left leg, his knee is almost going backwards. Um, and that actually causes this ball to kind of sail out of the reach of Pickens. But, um, again, there were some missed opportunities on the, on the the left on the field on this drive uh, without a question. All right, so the Steelers, this is something new that they put in this year, these four strong looks. You get the orbit motion uh, from Jalen Warren. More often than not, uh, Pickens has been the isolated receiver on the backside. The ball has almost always uh, went to him on this on these kinds of plays. Normally, it's either some type of fade or slant. This one looks like a hitch um, against man coverage. And I think – Really, this is not a bad play in general. Uh, you know, the ball comes out. It's mostly on time. It's on his face mask. This is really just a credit to the defense, in my opinion. You can make the argument that maybe this route needs to be run just like a half yard uh, further so that when he catches it, he's at the sticks, and you can move the first down like that with forward progress. But this is just a good tackle by the DB. Um, they actually weirdly ruled him, like, up right there for some reason, end up losing yards. Uh, but don't have a problem uh, with the play call, with the throw, anything like that. Um, it was third down, so they, they come up short, end up having to kick the field goal before half. But, again, this was a drive that I definitely did not expect them to score on, end up scoring, so that's always a good thing. All right, so now we're into the second half here. Uh, talked about it a little bit on the preview, uh, but the, the Bengals do like to run a lot of these uh, – you know, cover two, like non-traditional kind of simulated pressures right here. Going to bring a slot blitz, drop Hendrickson out. All this is just Tampa or like cover two invert uh, down at the bottom of the screen. Another free access throw. Uh, they're basically asking this safety right here, who is aligned over Darnell Washington. They're asking him to cover the curl flat. 
uh, that he's already out leveraged. We get another kind of that stick Omaha concept, the mirrored routes um, on this play. Kind of we saw this early in the game. Uh, so, you know, the Steelers, too, just one more thing about the playbook. And this isn't – these aren't, like, new concepts necessarily that they're running. The game plan was fairly basic. Uh, the Steelers' playbook in general, in my opinion, is fairly basic, about as basic as it gets from a passing game standpoint. Uh, but it was just well executed. Uh, again, I think the big thing was, again, Rudolph knowing where his eyes need to be post-snap, uh, not being, you know, confused by any of the simulators, anything like that, um, and just getting the ball out on time. One step, hitch, boom. Five yard play, you get on schedule, uh, and you know, you get a second four. All right, so third and two uh, in the third quarter. We're going to get the motion from Firemuth. That's going to give the quarterback a man zone tail. So someone travels with him, more than likely getting man coverage. Uh, this is just all stop routes, honestly. Again, that kind of all hitches kind of concept or play they like to run. Uh, this is a tough one. This is one that I saw live and tweeted about right after it happened that, that this is a tough one for me to look at. Um, you know, they are the Bengals are going to run uh, some type of drop eight. So you're going to get some extra defenders kind of dropping out and trying to clog up those zones. A lot of times you'll see defenses run this uh, when teams like to run like mesh concepts or crossers on these type of plays uh, because it helps uh, kind of distribute those routes or pass those things off. But if you actually watch, it looks like the progression is the over the ball route uh, to Fryermuth, and then he looks at George Pickens, and then we end up getting some type of double move, kind of just really a throw away at the bottom of the screen. Uh, but this is a tough turn down. Uh, it, like I said, it looked like it live, but Pickens is wide open right here. This ball absolutely has to go to him. You can see, uh, you know, Rudolph does hang a little bit right here, I feel like, in the middle of the field. Uh, but right here, once he kind of locates Pickens, this ball has to be out. I mean, that's an edge defender right there that's in coverage. So it's not like he's uh, extremely athletic or somebody that you're going to be worried about making a miraculous uh, tip ball or something like that. Um, that ball just has to go, has to be out right there. Um, like I said, there weren't really many turndowns, in my opinion, uh, guys that he just saw and just didn't throw the football. Uh, but that was the one that kind of stuck out on film that was just kind of unfortunate, especially because it was third and two. All right, so we get another third and short. Uh, the Bengals went down and scored, I think, right before this. It's a two-possession game at this point. I think Anaruma was just trying to get really aggressive, um, and I think that aggression kind of came back to bite them, uh, mainly just because, you know, they left 14 out here on an island. Uh, really doesn't matter who you put out here, in my opinion. Uh, if the Steelers get this type of look, this ball is going over the top. Uh, like nine times out of ten. So um, really just want to give Mason credit, again, just taking the deep shot. I like I like the aggressiveness right here. Um, you can argue, you know, is the go ball, you know, the absolute best decision in third and short. But sometimes, like, because of the down and distance, you can get the coverages that you want to take a shot. Uh, and that's exactly what happens. You get a blitz look. They're just playing man coverage behind it. You see the post safety, a total non-factor. Um, on this one in the middle of the field and really Rudolph it's just one step boom balls out and this is a beautiful ball I mean probably the best ball that he threw all night to be honest with you uh, this is right on the outside shoulder Pickens does a good job winning vertically um, and then this really veteran we'll just call it a subtle kind of push off right here on the shoulder pad to kind of create a little late separation you see the late hands and then from there it's really just a foot race uh, he outruns two guys Gives this guy a little bit of a point right here, a little taunting. Um, but when you're having the game that he was having, man, it's it's difficult to to blame the guy uh, for celebrating a little bit. But again, um, just really like uh, you know the aggressiveness, and I thought that overall his aggressiveness, you know, when he uh, decided to push the ball down the field, it was warranted. And then he was, you know, plays like this were just deadly accurate. I mean, that is an absolute dime. One more time in stride you know at that point again foot race big touchdown and then from this point it's pretty much a blowout really just putting this play in here just as more of a venting uh thing more than anything else but really really hope that whoever the stewards go with at offensive coordinator whoever's at quarterback we got to figure something out with this under center play action passing game i mean it is so horrific to watch um they hardly ever throw play action especially under center uh, but even when they do, everything just looks so disjointed. It hardly ever works. Like they're one of the, they've been one of the worst teams in the league at this for years and years and years and years. 
uh, you know, just right here, this is just a straight up coverage sack. So really what they're doing is you're getting a little play action fake, and then you're going to get a triangle read up at the top of the screen. It's almost, it almost plays out like snag. You get the arrow, the kind of uh, sit route right there with the hitch, and then you're going to get the corner behind it to Darnell Washington. If you're being picky here, uh, you could argue maybe that you throw this corner and you throw it maybe a little bit um, – you know, flatter and with some touch to give Washington a little bit of room to run underneath it. But he's right here. He's really just the alert. Like he's not really in the progression. Usually you're going one to the flat, two to the sit. Neither one of those options are really open. And because we've got a safety down here in the box at the bottom of the screen and it's covered three, there's no one on that side of the field for like to really hold him down. So he knows that the glance is coming right behind it and he's able to kind of fill this window. So when Rudolph gets back to that side of the field, this is already really taken away. Um, so there's not really anywhere to go with the football. He kind of just like sacks himself, runs at a pressure right here. Uh, but this, in my opinion, uh, Dan Moore struggled throughout the game. So definitely not trying to uh, sugarcoat that. But this, in my opinion, is just more of a covered sack slash the quarterback running into pressure. Um, but you can kind of, again, kind of see the reads. Also, like the Steelers play action game is so bad. Um, you can watch the linebackers. Uh, you can always tell like which passing games uh, have the respect of defenses when they go play action just by the movement of the linebackers. Look at the movement of the linebackers on 55 and 27 right here. 55 doesn't move an inch. 27 is already retreating by the time like Rudolph really even fakes that ball. Um, but you can see there's just not really anywhere to go with this football. So, All right, so the Bengals throwing a different look at them this time, getting a, kind of a cover zero look on third down with a bonus dropper uh, from the defensive lineman. Pressure gets home early, but he does have a good pocket to get the ball out. Uh, I think, again, this is just something that I've noticed, uh, just have watched him you know, since college. Uh, just these outbreakers, just not really one of his strengths in terms of throwing. You see Deontay Johnson. Um, he does slip a little bit coming out of his break. Again, not getting like quite enough depth. I'm not really sure of the coaching point there, uh, but this is going to be a really tough conversion anyway. Uh, but having said that, you cannot miss these types of throws to the sideline. Uh, you can't be late or inside or both. Uh, and I think that this is definitely inside. Uh, the cornerback luckily drops the ball. Um, but you can see kind of where this thing lands. This thing needs to be more towards the sideline. You see Johnson kind of starting to drift back to the inside to try to break this one up. Uh, but this one really probably should have been intercepted. This is the one turnover-worthy play, if you want to use a PFF term, uh, that I would have given him uh, responsibility for. Just one of those um, – kind of ugly misses but again we can kind of look at the footwork the mechanics of it uh you still see the kind of the same thing watch his left leg almost scoot backwards he locks out that front leg um and i just think it really affects the accuracy of the throws especially when he's throwing to the sideline because you see him almost change the motion of the way that he throws the ball uh whenever he's throwing those outbreakers for whatever reason so all right so another third down third and four right here another shot concept play uh, I told you guys they missed on a couple of these uh, that should have been touchdowns. And this one, kind of the same thing, man, to be honest with you. Three-by-one formation. Uh, I want you to pay attention to what happens with this post safety right here. Um, the Bengals are playing cover one. They're playing man coverage. Uh, they're trying to disguise it a little bit pre-snap. Uh, but you can see this post safety. He knows, okay, I got pickings over there. He is isolated. That's probably where the ball is going to go. They get the hard jam on him up top. You see they're basically bracketing him over the top. And what that does is it leaves Deontay Johnson uh, as the number two one-on-one -on -one against Mike Hilton. Hilton, we know him, good blitzer, really good run defender, not the best in coverage. The further you get him away from the line of scrimmage, you can kind of take advantage of him a little bit. And this ball just its not close. Um, but, again, run the slide fade. It's a nice man-to-man, -man, middle field close beater. Uh, really nice route here from Johnson, who also kind of gets grabbed, to be honest with you. Um, but this ball is not really close enough, especially to draw a penalty. But, you know, Deontay, I don't think he really had but like a couple catches. You know, the box score didn't look like it uh, was really anything. But, man, he could have had a really impressive game uh, if they would have connected on some of these throws. The first throw – on this concept uh, early in the game that he missed to Calvin Austin. I think you can kind of put that one more on pressure. Uh, this, to me, this this pocket isn't the cleanest, but it's good enough. Uh, you know, they, they do struggle a little bit to pick up this stunt late. 
um, which has been a theme of the Steelers' offensive line throughout the season. But right here, he knows where he's going with the football. Got to step into this throw. Got to make that one, even though there's a little bit of pressure. Um, and even if you don't make it, you know, it doesn't have to be a perfect throw. We kind of saw that with the Pickens one. Um, you know, good enough is good enough, especially on downfield throws like this when there's pressure, a little bit of pressure in your face. Uh, but right here, you at least got to give uh, – you got to give 18 at least a shot. So, um, you know, Mason, again, he played well. But there was just – there was more opportunities uh, for big-time plays uh, left on the field, which I think you can take some solace in knowing that, like, you know, this – this wasn't a fluke. There there were other plays to be had. Overall, really nice performance of Mason Rudolph stepping in. Uh, definitely think it was a drastic improvement over what Trubisky had given them over the past three weeks. But I, I do think, uh, just watching the film, I think that you can make an argument uh, that this was one of the better games, if not the best game that we've st seen from a Steelers quarterback the last uh, two seasons. And, um, you know, like I said, it wasn't perfect. Uh, I don't think that Mason had this um, – you know, the, the greatest game of all time or anything like that. I think anyone saying that this was a just this spectacular performance is probably uh, maybe gassing it up just a little bit too much. But I think uh, more than anything, man, like I kept coming back to this word on Twitter, uh, both during the game, after the game, after I watched the film is um, just consistency and competency. Like those two words just kept coming into my brain. Um, I just thought that he gave the Steelers competent quarterback play. And I think that competent quarterback play can go a long way when your defense is playing well like they did on Saturday. Um, and it allows you to showcase some of these weapons that they've got. Um, I know that that's been a big topic of conversation. You know, uh, George Pickens dominated the headlines last week. But, you know, he's a really, really good player, man. Like, they got to figure out the way to get the ball in his hands. And I feel like if they can get consistent quarterback play, like he can uh, really ascend into you know a really special player so we'll have to see what happens I know the big storyline this week is you know who should start Kenny or Mason whatever uh, I've already given my take on that really on Twitter and I'm not going to do that in a forum like like this uh, in a film room session so um, but you guys can let me know in the comments who you guys think should start what y'all think should happen going forward what you guys thought of the video Mason's performance all that stuff uh, just do me a favor on the way out, like, subscribe, turn on notifications. I really appreciate all that stuff, um, and I will holler at you guys next time. Peace, love.